Gig Gab, the show for working musicians, episode 276 for Monday, October 19th, 2020. <music> Greetings, folks. And welcome to Gig Gab, the show by, for, and about working musicians. As usual, here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. In the central coast of California, Napomo, California, this is Paul Kent. Hey, man. How you doing today? Good, man. How are you? I'm good. I've been, uh, my, my musical life has shifted uh, from focusing on playing, you know, gigs and when the next gig is going to be, although it seems like I might have something brewing coming up, but uh, basically shifted from thinking about the next gig to focusing a lot on uh, some recording projects with a lot of different songwriter friends and bands. We're doing some more with Bitter Pill. Uh, but I've also got some friends that I've been recording with, uh, for years. And, uh, and so some of that has been coming back to the surface. And so I'm getting back into the studio thing and enjoying that and, uh, you know, which is fun. So it keeps me playing. It keeps me focused. It keeps me collaborating, which is really, that's the part that I, I enjoy perhaps the most about playing live is it's, you know, it's a conversation. It's a collaboration. For sure. it's, it's a real time collaboration, right? Whereas the studio stuff is more of an, you know, asynchronous collaboration, but it's still collaborating. And I find that if I lean into that part of it, I really get excited about it. And it, you know, it can, it can take me into a journey, which is good. Like that's the whole idea of this, right? Is to, to live in the moment of that collaboration, whatever it is, the, the real time one on stage or the, you know, where I can just lose myself in, in what I'm doing in that moment for a while. And, and that's a, that's well, a how about thing. this? Let's not go down the rabbit hole, but let me just ask you a very, very pointed question. Sure. You give me, you give me an answer and then we're going to move on. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Will we be back to normal playing live gigs in 2021, all of calendar 2021? Oh, I don't think so. No, I, I think, I mean, I think come, you know, spring of 2021, I mean, with the plans that, that we, and when I say we, I'm mostly talking about the band Bitter Pill, but uh, the plans that we're making are for outdoor shows. We're kind of coming up with some interesting ideas for how we can do that in an interesting way. And, you know, like that band's not just a band of musicians, it's a band of musicians that are at varying levels sort of steeped in the theater world too, or at least tangentially involved in the theater world. So there's, there's lots of like things to and you're, you're answering this a little bit differently than I thought. And I don't, I don't okay. want to go down the hole cause sure. we've got time in the future, but let me just say, are the, are, you know, bitter pill kind of creates their own vibe so that that's a unique, right. You, yeah. you either rent out a theater or you, you know, if you're talking about outdoor things, but yeah. I mean, public gigs, like fairs, gigs indoors in bar. Oh, um, yeah, indoors I don't. Indoors or outdoors? Yeah, I don't think yes so. Yes or no? I don't think yeah. so. No, no. I, I, it sure I is starting to feel like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. And you know, and I, I believe with I believe Mark Geiger. I like I. I mean, I don't believe him. I agree with Mark Geiger, but he's a smart dude. Uh, he, you know, he says basically 2022 is when is when things come back. And I, th I think and he's right. I think that's one of the things as we are as most musicians we're living in a little bit of a state of hope but we're not really confronting or, or looking too deep at the reality. And I, I tend to agree with you. It's going to be next year. It's going to be all about, all about getting vaccines out there and, you know, then some distance from the, from the, the waves of, of infections. And yeah. I, I, it's starting to really feel that way. And once you say that, A, it's a little bit freeing because you just know you don't have any power over it, but B, <laughs> it's, it's right. also scary as hell. I mean, and, and I'll ask you another question. Um, when you're in a band, even if you don't play every week, you're kind of in contact almost every week. And fair enough. Yeah. And yeah. I know in my band, we're going long periods of time without like a lot of, like I talk to Simon, you know, most days. That's good. And, and I'll hear from other guys because Simon and I do, you know, have done acoustic stuff together and, you know, we share ideas and that type of thing. But, but, you know, I'm going days without talking to many of the guys in the band as a whole. I notice like our Slack traffic. And, and that's that thing I, I, I worry about. That's, you know, a band is a cohesion. And, you know, I, I think there's a, a little bit of a blind 
belief that, well, when the music opens back up, I'll be there, you know, call, call me and, you know, we'll, we'll pick up where we were. But that thing that, that, that vibe, that, that cohesion that you spend time creating as a band, I think that takes nurturing. I don't think you can, you can leave that alone. You know, maybe, maybe in many bands, it takes a week to pick it back up. Some bands it'll take a month to pick up and some bands may never get it back. I mean, some, some bands, once you kind of lose that, that closeness. And again, in two years of not playing together, guys, guys will get preoccupied with other types of things, you know, that whether it's personal or, you know, professional things, I, will, things, things change in two years. I think, Oh, definitely things change. I, and it's interesting. I, I, I know I was going to say, I think it depends on the band. I know that it depends on the band because I'm, I'm involved in several. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and so uh, with bitter pill, the conversations still continue. So like almost as though nothing has changed in terms of our ability to play out, even though obviously, wait, wait, let me, let me ask a question. How do they continue? Cause Billy keeps you all, you know, focused on it and, you know, seeds questions and, you know, ask for advice and, you know, kind of gives you guys ideas where, where his mind is going. He's yeah. the leader. And so he, you're going where he's going, right? He is. Although really the conversation has been going so sort of, uh, so freely that everybody is contributing and, and it's a, it's a thing, but, but yes, I mean, Billy definitely is the one that sort of cheerleads when, uh, when things, when things aren't happening. So yes, it, you know, and he's doing this consciously just to keep your head in the game, right? Well, and also to keep the project moving along. I mean, we're in the middle I, of recording. Well, we're going to, we're going to wind up recording three more records between now and the spring. Uh, mm. And so, so that's happening. Right. And we're figuring out different ways of, of, doing that and proceeding forward with, with sort of phase one of that. So, so that's happening. The fling thing is interesting. I, it won't surprise me if fling never plays another live gig again. Um, wow. Yeah, but that's not entirely because of the, the pandemic, right? That's sort of a direction that fling was going. Aaron's been, been separated, you know, from the band um, distance wise for a while, which made that sort of thing more difficult. Russ goes through phases where he hates playing live. And right now he's very much in a phase of like, I don't, I don't find any need to play live. And it's like, okay, well, mm. if we got two guys that, and that's again, that happens, that happened many times before pandemic. So it, that's not a, you know, but the pandemic makes that certainly very easy to lean into. Right. So that's, that's sort of a phase, but the fling conversation keeps happening like perhaps more than any other band in which I'm involved. Because Fling Fling has always, even from when I started hanging out with those guys, uh, there's always been an email trail or a text trail of inane banter going back and forth. I mean, it like most of the time having nothing to do with music that we're playing and sometimes having nothing to do with music at all. So that keeps going. And so that camaraderie is there. So with two of the bands, the camaraderie is there. And then with, like with Uptown, I would say it's the same level of communication, but it's all or the same frequency, but that frequency has always been very sort of limited. You know, it might be once every couple of weeks, there's a little flare up on the text trail or something. And it's like, Oh, we engage. And then it, it goes away, you know, and that's, mm. but that's normal unless we have a gig coming up, in which case, you know, there's more chatter because we've got a thing, but remember uptown was playing maybe once a month anyway. So like, it wasn't like a daily chatter about, you know, here's the logistics of the next gig. And I think maybe that's, Maybe there's something to that bands that aren't playing bands that were playing, you know, three times a week, even once a week, uh, gigging once a week, probably are having a harder time maintaining that camaraderie during this than bands that, that weren't because bands that weren't, like you said, it, it, you know, proving your point bands need to, you know, you need to kind of have that thing going. The bands I'm in, we already figured that out because we, we it was normal for us to go weeks without playing a gig together. So so we kind of have that momentum um, and and we've you know, we've figured it out. But the good news is you can figure it out. You, you know, it's it's not a um, it's not an impossibility. You just need to come up with other subjects that are of interest to all of you. And and then, you know, just keep talking about them, I guess. Mm, well, right. Because they're your friends. You. Yeah. Well, yes. Um. Uh, so we have a Slack channel. Yeah, you know, we have Slack. Yep. And um, I'm just finding the engagement on Slack is is more like, you no, know, we don't really have anything right in front of us. Right. And so 
you know, there's not a lot of engagement. And I, I feel some red flag to that. Um, it was sure was great when we played together, but then it fell off again right after that. Right. Yep. And I think it's, I don't, you know, no one's a bad guy. It's just, it's not the most important thing to you. I mean, checking Slack is not a natural, you know, you and I are on email or something all the time. And some of the guys are rarely on that stuff. And so right. now they don't have to be, they're even one more step removed. And, you know, I think a couple of guys have gotten their minds, you know, it's not going to be a gig thing, you know, for in, in any certain amount of time. So let's not worry about it. So, as a leader, and I guess just kind of bring this all the way around. As a reader, as a leader, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I think keeping your band's engagement just is smart because it, you know oh, yeah. you don't want to, you don't want to have to start from a standing stop when it's time to go, right? So you know the things that I'm doing is we talked about a strategy. Do we want to use this time to individually learn, you know, new material and whenever we have an opportunity to try and bring it together, we will, but we'll have new material for when things open up and, you know, all right, of our 180 songs, let's pick a two and a half hour show as our A list. And maybe next year for the first time, we're going to play, we're going to play a show, you know, instead of calling something different every, 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 you know, having a different show every night and just, you know, thinking through those types of things. But I'm just mostly finding that, um, you know, when we're, when we are engaged, it's nice, but it, you know, just kind of like engagement for the sake of engagement, I'm finding a little bit tougher going. So I would say if I were in your band, you, and of course this might be the reason you'd throw me out of your band. So to be fair, right? <laughs> <laughs> never, never, but, but if I were in your band right now and the only conversation that was happening was about, well, here's what we can do now to make ourselves ready for the next time we play that in and of itself isn't a problem. The problem is me, Dave, the drummer looks at this and says, well, but, yeah, but like, I don't think we're going to play until 2022. Right. And even that is just a nebulous thing. Like that's just like not next year. Right. In, in the way that yeah. you guys want to play that, you know, you might have opportunities to play, but you said you want to play with bigger crowds and the set. So no, okay. Not 2022, not, not until 2022. So that's a really hard thing to get my attention on right now, especially if, you know, I, in my email box is somebody saying, Hey, want to record a song right now? Like, yes, sounds good. That's music mm. today. Right. So I, I think, you, 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 one, there's one of two things that come to mind that you could do. One of them is say, okay, what kind of gig, assuming everything is pretty much the way it is now, but people are stir crazy and we are more, you know, every, every month, I was going to say every day, but certainly every month we learn more about how to deal with this thing and how to, you know, where our, our safety levels are and that sort of thing. So, Assuming that that progresses even slowly between now and let's say May, you know, focus on Memorial Day, right? Great little thing. People are going to want to do a thing. What kind of thing could we as a band plan for for Memorial Day 2021 that is going to be safe? Obviously, we're talking outside. Maybe not. Obviously, I'll say it. We are. I, I would be talking outside. You know, how could we do a distance thing? Maybe a drive in and like start focusing on that so that. Even if it falls apart and doesn't happen, you have a, a focal point for which all of this, hey, let's learn new tunes, let's do a thing, let's, you know, on our own do this preparation so that we're ready for the big Memorial Day 2021 thing. Now, of course, you got to be careful because if it falls apart, you got to sort of give people a, you know, a, a net to land in. But, um, but, you know, like it's something either that. Or, and maybe in parallel to that, the, the, my two ideas are not mutually exclusive, but the other one would be start talking about different things, like, like just things of interest to all of you, like the fling inane banter, right? Not, not every band needs the kind of fling banter. It's weird, but, but it keeps <laughs> us, but it's, it's something that we like, you know? And so it's a thing that goes on and we, we overly dissect stuff. And I mean, it just goes on and on and on and it's fantastic. I love it. In fact, it's one of the things that attracted me to fling in the beginning was like, Oh, these guys are like me. They like to dissect things and, and overanalyze and wow, this is great. I found my people. Right. And so that continues. And, and if it's not something that exists, maybe you can seed it so that it, it does. Again, I don't recommend doing exactly what we do in Flame because it's weird and it probably shows that we have problems. But 
Um, but you know, there's, there is something there. So I would, I would put either a focal point on the music side of it or just let the music side of it slide knowing that, okay, it's probably going to be 2022. So let's just be friends about the things that we're friendly about. I don't know. That's, that's how I look at these things, man. I no, I get it. And I agree. We got to find that you, as a leader, we can just wrap this all up in a nice bow. As a leader, it behooves you to try and keep your, your team in game. Totally. So, so yes. you're not starting flat footed, you know, and also just, you know, the, all the side benefits, keeping the relationships intact, you know, being mutually supportive as we get through this weird time. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of reasons why you want to do it. Yeah. It does. <laughs> I mean, oh, separate the from I, the music, I, right? You know, the whole yeah. thing sucks. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And, you know, you're, you're one of my best buddies in the world, so I do have to wish you... Happy new Bruce album week. Happy new Bruce album week. I'm looking forward to watching that documentary, man. That, that yeah. looks good. Yeah, yeah. I love documentaries like that. So, yeah, that's that's exciting. And this first album they recorded live in the studio in a long time, right? Since that's Born right. in the USA. Yeah. No, I, mean, I like that. I'm loving it. I got the new Petty thing last week and then the new Bruce thing coming this week. Right. I've got fun stuff to listen to. And they get inspired. I actually am finding, you know, I have a guitar in my hand probably four or five hours a day now. Wow. So Good I'm, for you. Yeah, I'm actually playing a lot of music right now. I mean, some of it, I'm just doing little simple, you know, videos for my, for my uh, Facebook page. And, sure. you know, some of it is just, but I, I'm actually very consciously aware. My chops are, are getting better again. You know, like stuff that was really challenging to play is, you know, starting to feel like butter. I, when Eddie passed away, you know, I never was that style of guitar player, but right. I was like, you know, it, it, you know, that might be an interesting thing when things happen to pull out a tribute to Eddie and, I, and it would be fun to surprise people yeah. if I was to play something like that. So, you know, I'm going to learn in the jump solo, which is, you know, we, we, I think we mentioned this last week, yeah. the jump solo is in, in a very short amount of time, eight bars, I believe it is all of the style sweeps, tapping, you know, fast runs. Yep. I mean, it's, it's all of Eddie condensed into magic eight bars. It is. He, yeah, he, yeah. I agree with that. Yeah. That's pretty cool, man. Well, I look forward to hearing you play it. So Thank there you. you go. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, we did have a question last week that we promised we would get to this week and I know we're short on time today. So I am going to read Mike's question. Uh, and he said, uh, this question's in regards to your recent request for listeners to give their own band building details, uh, and experience. And here is mine about a band I have recently been in. The band was started by the guitar player, Steve and I, we got together through Craigslist and looked to Craigslist to complete the band. We quickly, quickly came across a fun loving rhythm guitar player named Todd who could also sing lead. Aha. That's good. Todd expressed the great attitude that he would do whatever was best for the band. If that means singing lead on some songs, sharing the lead with another lead singer, playing rhythm guitar or playing percussion in the background, he would do it. Todd traveled for business. And during a two week trip, Steve and I auditioned a bass player and a female lead singer. Uh, they were both great during the impromptu audition. Upon returning from his trip, we told Todd of our findings. His attitude quickly changed as he told us in no uncertain terms that he will not be part of a band that includes a female lead singer. Todd expressed that his issue was this. Although starting as a band, you will end up being portrayed as the female lead singer's backup band. We told Todd we didn't feel that this was going to be an issue and that we were going to welcome her into the band. He told us good luck and he was out. Fast forward four years, and in my personal belief, Todd was exactly right. The band is considered her backup band by not only the audience, but by venues we play for and even eventually the lead singer herself. I understand that this band could be an anomaly, especially considering the self-promoting machine that is our female lead singer, but I have been in plenty of male-fronted bands, and this was never an issue, especially when the male singer, male lead singer plays an instrument. I seem to recall you guys touching on the subject of female versus male-fronted bands. This could be a great topic for a show. All right. So um, I, I guess I'll start since I've been in a few bands with female lead singers, and I've never really had this issue. Now, I, I say that with, I'm sure, an asterisk or four. Um, the only one where it got close was a band called Knockoff, which which was, I call it the Kelly Band. It was the first band I was in here in New Hampshire. Um, it was a four-piece band fronted by Kelly. Um, but it was her band from the get-go. It never was like the four of us are forming a band or two of us forming a band and bringing her into it. So like, I walked into that gig feeling like we were her backing band. And for the most part, it really did kind of feel like a band other than the fact that she very much was the leader, but that was true from day one. So, you know, and 
you know, and, and that, that worked out all right. Um, so while I've never experienced this with a woman, Paul, I can totally see how it can happen, especially if she is the face of the band with regards to promotion and, and that sort of thing, because I've seen it happen with guys and I've mm. been in a band where this happened. You know, the band was doing extremely well. Um, the rest of us kind of understood that we needed to roll with it, even though we didn't like what was happening from that side of it. You know, it was, you look at the big picture and it's like, well, this is actually kind of a good thing, but there's this, you know, we don't really like, we were a band. What happened now? It's we're like, everybody just sees that guy. Um, uh, and it worked out after some honest conversations amongst the band, like as things continued to progress, we talked it through and it was okay. Um, so I, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I, have, it, I have two thoughts on this. Yeah. <clears throat> so I played in a trio with a, a great woman singer. She was the best. Um, her talent stuck out like the, you know, mm -hmm. me and the other guitar player, you know, we were workmanlike, but her voice was awesome. Sure. She, she this is Mary Ellen, my friend. Yeah. So yeah. The other thing is she also is really experienced. And I think, you know, she's been the front of bands. She's been the front of bands that her husband have been in. She gets that there's a dynamic there that the woman needs to manage in whatever way she wants to manage it. But, you know, and she manages it by over bending over to, you know, say, wasn't that a great solo or God, I love how you play the guitar part. Sure. She constantly was make, put forth a ton of effort to make it feel like a band uh, but you know, if you're just coming and walk in and go, Oh, that's nice, man. She has a really great voice now. So, so I'll dot that to my thought here is we say on this show, always be performing, right? Yep. So you have to, you have to make a decision. If you're going to have a band, that's going to have a, a female front singer and you have brought her in because she's a great performer and she sings great. That's the way it goes. The front person, yeah. you know, <laughs> commands yeah. the vibe, right? Unless the rest not of the band... Keep going. Sorry. Unless going. the rest of the band finds their vibe and, and then, and then what people think and see when they see the band is, man, that group is really entertaining. Oh, and that singer is really good. But the thing is, if you're a bunch of guys who stare at your shoes and you have a girl out there, you know, pouring it out or a guy, I guess, but yeah. you know, with girls, because you tend to run into that they're less inhibited with performing, that their ranges are usually, you know, they're hitting notes or, you know, doing some things, the, the things that get, you know, people, we say that this is always be performing. This is a visual medium. If you have a front person who is exploiting that visual medium, that's what's going to happen. So you can't really complain about it as uh, in your band if the rest of your band isn't, you know, finding its way to do stuff. I mean, you you have to design a show. You have to design a, a vibe for the whole ensemble that accomplishes the things that you want to accomplish. So whether that's a dress, whether that's shtick, whether that's choreography, whether that's, you know, what happens off mic, how, how, how are you going to work this great town? Let's just assume that, you know, the, the woman that you're bringing in is a great town, you know, visually impressive, you know, either how they look or how they perform. And again, I, I, this isn't a sexist comment. This is like, I think it's a fair thing to say, you know, women who come and want to front bands, they want to front bands. They want right. to perform. They want to move. They want to, you know, they want to dive into their vocal performances. If they're really good at that, it's going to look, and the rest of you are not, it's not her fault, right? Or that's, it's not his fault if he's the one. That that that's really what it comes down to, and it, and I I really think this is you're right that it's a it's a different there is a a different aspect to this dynamic when it's a, a woman versus a man. But like I said, this this happens regardless if you've got one person that is your lead singer that stands out like miles beyond the rest of the band. If you're all there along for the ride. Well, yeah, that's the person that's going to be the focal point because they are making themselves the focal point. And I've seen bands where, you know, it's female lead singer, but the band is going nuts. You know, the entire band is going nuts, not just the, the lead singer. And then you're like, that band's pretty freaking good. You know, like to your point, it's 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 up to you to always be performing. And that includes what you're doing there. Like I think about Uptown Celebration, right? Like 100 percent. That is Gary's band. There's no question whatsoever that that's Gary's band, right? But, and anybody that books us knows it's Gary's band. They think about it like it's Gary's band. In fact, I've heard people call it Gary's band and they're not wrong. However, 
any of the people that are watching the band, if that's their only interaction or experience with the band, they might forget to tell you that they saw Gary on stage. I mean, <laughs> like it, he hides in the shadows and it's cause he's, it's not his thing. Like he'll, you know, he'll perform and he'll move and stuff, but, but being that sort of overreaching performer is just not his thing. And so he stays out of the way physically he sets himself up so that he's out of the way. And yep. you, you know, and he lets the people that he has hired do the thing that he has hired them to do, right? And and so he knows this, like. But there's no question of any of us on stage, certainly, whose band it is. It's his. And I've seen other wedding bands like that. I we the I went to a wedding I don't know, a couple of years ago for my brother-in-law, and we happened to have a table right near the band. And it took me a little while. It, me, right? Like I'm used to looking at a stage, sussing out what's going on, and all that. It took me probably half the first set to realize, oh, it's the bass player's band. Okay, he's the one calling all the shots. He had a vocal mic in front of him. It took me a while to realize his mic's not in the PA. It's only in everybody's ears. He's the mm. one calling the shots during the tunes. He's telling them what they're going to be doing next, all this other stuff. And everybody just does their thing. But if you, if I wasn't like paying attention and specifically looking to see how the dynamic of the band worked, I don't know that I could have told you what the bass player looked like because he he faded into the, you know, the scenery other than that he was the one running the show. And it was like, That's oh, it. look at that. That's interesting. Okay. You know, like on the far end of, of the spectrum of an example, Van Halen, right? You know, right. great front man, great front man. But many you know, of them, in fact. Yes. <laughs> many, yes, several of them. But, you know, Eddie, Eddie's talent, they're going to ride that. And Eddie was a great performer also. And the band had a vibe. So they created something. If it would have been a bunch of guys standing around with David Lee Roth, we would only be talking about David Lee Roth. You well, know, Van Halen wouldn't have survived stuff. past David Lee Roth were it right. not for the fact that they were, you know, as a, you're right, they were a band. David Lee Roth was, you know, a phenomenal front man, like I mean, right. phenomenal. But the again, band we're talking about survived without him. Yeah. We're, yeah. We're talking about an extreme. I mean, the talent of Eddie Van Halen. But but the point is, I think, should be clear is that is that that band had a lot of weapons. If your yeah. band only has one weapon and it's that woman, you know, being fronting for you, you decide you want to ride that weapon or, and you know, and it, will it take you to greater heights or do you want to be happy and have fun and, and, you know, maybe not go to the same places, try the same material, but you know, take it at a different point. Well, but that, I, you know, that's I, 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 I want to, I do want to interrupt you here because that, what you just said is a key thing to identify and I think if we had identified it sooner in the band that I was in, we were young, we didn't really understand, we were, you know, jealous or whatever of the attention that one guy was getting over the rest. And it, I think it did hurt us because it, 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 it caused us to pull our foot off the gas a little bit, right? We got distracted by that as opposed to saying, wait a minute. And we did eventually say, wait a minute, like, this is a good thing. Let's keep going with it. Uh, but it, it is... Like when, when you've got somebody that is leading the charge, it is okay. It might not be okay for you, but in a general sense, in the way of the world and the way that things often go, it's okay to follow that person through to, uh, to a success, more successful place than you would be if you essentially went with the lowest common denominator. Like whoever the person is that, that performs the least, if that person wants to feel like they are being recognize just as much as everybody else in the band, then everybody needs to come down to that person unless that person can find their way to go up. But usually sure. there's a limit, right? Y you know, at least in the short term about how conspicuous you can make yourself, how comfortable you are, you know, because I've been in bands with guys that are like, well, I want to get my equal share. And it's like, yeah, but you don't even want to put on clothes that, that look nice on stage. So, what are we all supposed, we're all supposed to water it down to that level. And when you do that in a band, then the band is watered down to that level. And it's like, okay, well, now we look like guys that finished mowing our lawns and we're out on stage <laughs> and, you know, we're doing our thing and we play well, but you know, nobody wants to out, nobody wants to be upstaged here. So, uh, we're just going to all sort of lay back and, and be lame. You know, that, that's not, a, I, I'm, I'm being a little bit you know, no, I get it. but it's not like, that's what happens to many bands. If you've got somebody that's a performer, let them perform. And if that's not you support them, back them up, let it be the whatever show. And it's that person. And you know what? You'll get gigs, you'll get work and you'll have fun. <laughs> yep. yep. I, I think it's a great way to look at it. 
Yeah. I mean, you, you decide, are you in this, you know, for an egalitarian experience with everyone in the band? Are you in it for the band to go places? And if you're in it for the band to go places, often the strategy, ride, ride your best horse, you know? That's it, man. Yes. You know, that's what it is. So Yeah, you put your best pitcher out there. I'm not a baseball fan. I don't know why I went to that analogy, but that's what you do. Like, you don't take every, oh, everybody gets equal play. No, it's not that. It's whoever's the best goes and plays. That's how it is. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, I'm just kind of thinking through the bands I know with female fronts and, um, you know, some of them, the woman absolutely does stand out because she sounds great, looks great, performs great. You know, she grabs your attention. It's yeah. a visual medium. Right. And some of them, the woman is well, just part of the band and you get that vibe and you go, oh, yeah, that works. You know, kind of. a Yeah. Like, what would you say uh, about the pretenders? Like, you know, obviously, you know who Chrissy Hine was. Yeah. Song, because you saw, but that was a band, the pretenders, right? You, totally. You, you kind of, you vibed on the band, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, she had a great voice, but, but they, like, they wrote great songs. It was a good band. Yes, for sure. They were committed to being a band. I mean, their vibe overall, again, you knew it was Chrissy. She sang, she wrote, you know. Well, look at, look at know, Jefferson, the, you know, Airplane, Starship, whatever you want to right. call them, right? Same kind of thing. Like, we know what Grace Slick is. No question, but also they were a great friggin' band. So, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, so it, the answer, I guess the answer is it can be done. Yeah. You're not, it's not a foregone conclusion that you're going to be a backup band for the, for the singer. And if it does, it probably says more about the band than it does about the singer. Right. You I, I hate know. to, I hate to say this to you, Mike, but yeah, I, I, I kind of feel the same way is especially if you were alerted to this may be happening, uh, it, but it's, again, it's not a bad thing. Maybe it, it, if it's, if your point in this is to be in an egalitarian band, then be that and, and change the lineup so that you can be that. But if the point is to be successful, you know, you, you, you've got something lean into that and ride it. And, and if you need to up your game to, so that everybody is more of a participant, that's only going to make things better, especially or, if you have this conversation out loud with everyone like hey absolutely we noticed that you know tim is getting uh you know a lot more attention than the rest of us tim what do you think the rest of us can do so that we are seen as a band right that's the way to go after that not tim we need you to ratchet it back a little man yeah like that's not the i don't think that's the right thing for the success of the band it, in terms yeah. of the yeah right yeah wow. so and then the other thing is there's a few degrees in between the two points right totally so, can you design a show that if you do have a, you know, a strong guy singer as well, do you design a show where, you know, there are some duets where, you know, where the girl is backing up the guy in a really, you know, supportive way mm -hmm. that emphasizes the message that this is a total band, you know, thing, not, not a, not a front person and a backing group. So even Keith Richards got a couple of songs to sing every night, man, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and you know what? That meant a lot to Keith Richards. Fans. It did. I mean, that meant, it, yes. And that, that's part of the vibe of the Rolling Stones too. That was his contribution. So remember there's, there's one extreme you, you're backing up this lead singer because they're awesome and you're never going to get there. The other extreme is it's a band and you do the things that where everybody has got to up their game performing and, and playing wise. And then in the middle there, there's how do you design your show to emphasize your assets? Is the material right? Is the, is the, you know, staging, um, you know, correct? Is the audience interaction and how you say and what you say, what makes you memorable as a band? Those are all things that can happen. And costumes can be a part of this or dress or whatever you want to call uh, yeah, what you're wearing. Is, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Costumes would be, you know, one way we've kind of had that conversation about, you know, if you're not those zany, crazy people, you probably shouldn't be that because it'll come off as inauthentic. I, I see when I say costume, I mean, whatever it is I'm going to yeah. choose to no, intentionally wear on stage. And sometimes that's stage a black, probably. black shirt and jeans. And other times it's way more than that. Right. But, but everything you choose to wear on stage is your costume. Even if your I costume agree. is, I want to look like the guy that didn't, put any thought into wearing a costume, right? Well, like, it's your work clothes, right? Right. <laughs> exactly. It's yeah. Your it's your work clothes. clothes. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, this is like, we talk about, do you tape your show video uh, audio tape and critically take apart, you know, the playing, mm. do you videotape your shows and critically look at your, what the audience sees when they watch you perform? So we, you know, we spouse here, 
a spouse um, always be performing. But, you know, what are the things that you can do? It'd be an interesting set of, uh, you know, certainly interesting to get the feedback from people as to what they've done to like, you know, increase their, their, their performance, their visual performance over time. You know, again, sometimes it's, it's, like I have a horn section and we get some choreography going with the horns. It, you know, just visually draws the eye over to something happening when they're not blowing and, you know, it, it keeps them engaged. You know, I, I know for a lot of musicians, it's just like, I'm just going to disappear in the music and I'm going to emote what I'm playing, which that will work for some. And for others, it'll look like you're just gazing at your shoes, even though in your mind you're, you're disappearing in the music. For some people that translates to a, a positive visual stimulus but to other people it's um you know is that guy awake <laughs> is that guy yeah <laughs> yeah 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 well that's and that's what yeah being honest with what the product is that you're putting out there versus what you would want it to be is is a great step to take to figure out whether you're you know are you on the right path and and can you adjust so that everybody can be there a great performer with great chops who takes their performing performing seriously is a gift, not a curse. You have to decide whether you can accept that gift and kind of yeah. do what you need to do in your own game. Whether And that might be just allowing yourself to step back and the band isn't what you thought it was going to be. And, that, and you know, we, we've Nothing talked about this for, yeah. for forever, right? You know, like, do you have the same goals as a band? Is the band designed to only make money and as much money as possible? Then you want the most killer performing, playing people that you can. Is it a fun exercise for you and your people? Then you may, you might make a different, you know, situation. Yeah. I know, I know I've had, um, I've had really great pro musicians come through the house, house rockers, um, that I wouldn't hire for a full, like sub for us that I wouldn't hire to be in the band full time. Yeah. It's too much about them. You know, they're going to, they're going to mess with the, the, you know, fragility of the, of the interconnections between people, you know, the great player, but I'm, I'm good. We have, we have a lot of great players. And so you're, you're always making that trade off as to what is, what is the right thing for your band, for the goals of your band? If it's just to have fun and play barbecues, you might make a different decision. Totally. And if it is to make as much money as you possibly can, but in general, that's a good, you know, decision. Sometimes it's a hard decision and uncomfortable to say no to someone who might make your band better because it might not make your band funner. Sometimes that's just a hard call you're asked to make. Yep. Yep. For sure, man. Yeah. It's, I, I don't know if we answered your question. I, Mike, I, I really don't know if we gave you an answer that you wanted, but, uh, but we certainly appreciate the question. Uh, it's, that's the kind of thing we love to dig into here because it's good for all of us to, you know, objectively look at this. And honestly, oh, yeah. that's a, that's a great, thing to this was a great one so thank you feedback at giggabpodcast.com is where we would love to have you send your thoughts and questions so that we can dig into them here next week and i think that's all i got this week man you got anything else short and sweet this week short and sweet my friend all right thanks take it easy folks again feedback at giggabpodcast.com make sure you send us your stuff we'd love to hear from you we really really do what is it that we keep saying? I think we said it all the time. And we said it a lot of times today. <laughs> do we ABC. need to see it again? I don't think we do. ABP. 